Think about how frustrated you get building IKEA furniture. Now, imagine building a ship by hand that could outrun boats we use today. No engine, no GPS, no steel. That's exactly what the Vikings did, sailing wooden boats at speeds over 30 kilometers an hour. That's faster than many modern sailboats built with million dollar tech, and they did it more than a thousand years ago. How did a group of axe-wielding warriors design boats that could outpace today's engineering? The answer isn't just surprising, it's genius. At first glance, a Viking ship looks basic. A long wooden boat, no motor, no radar, no steel, just timber, rope, and sail. But step closer and it turns into something completely different. This wasn't just a boat, it was a weapon. The long ship was designed to move fast, strike silently, and vanish before enemies could react. The shape was long, narrow, and low in the water, what engineers now call low freeboard. That made it harder to spot from a distance, especially in fog or darkness. It moved like a shadow across the sea. The hull was razor sharp. Instead of bouncing over waves, it sliced through them. This design gave Vikings more speed and control, even in rough seas. Today's engineers call it a wave-piercing hull. The ship was symmetrical, meaning the front and back were identical. Why? Because turning wastes time. If Vikings needed to escape quickly, they just rode backward. No turning required. Instant retreat, instant attack. And underneath it all was the keel. A long, sturdy spine running down the center of the ship. It gave the longship balance and control, like a tightrope walker's pole under the waves. And the sail? A massive square sheet mounted in the center. Unlike most ships of the time, it wasn't just for tailwinds. Vikings angled their sail to catch wind from the side, what we now call sailing crosswind. That gave them flexibility to travel in almost any direction. Inside, up to 30 warriors sat along each side, rowing in sync. That team could generate around 15 horsepower just from human strength. And here's something wild. Many ships had dragon heads mounted at the front, not just to scare enemies, but to ward off evil spirits. According to Norse myth, a cursed voyage wasn't bad luck. It was Thor's punishment. Imagine you're on the shore just after sunrise. Out of the fog, a silent silhouette approaching the coast, wind howling, oars beating like war drums, and a carved dragon staring you down. I bet you'd be running. But behind that fear was something far more impressive. And here's the kicker. These ships could carry 40 fully armed warriors and still move faster than ships with engines. How? Well, the magic wasn't in the crew, it was in the construction. Here's the part that still blows people's minds. Viking longships could reach speeds of up to 17 knots. That's over 30 kilometers an hour, or just under 20 miles per hour, with no engine. Most modern sailboats cruise at 5 to 10 knots. Even early steamships had trouble keeping up. This wasn't luck, it was by design. In 2007, a full-size Viking replica called the Sea Stallion reached 12 knots in testing, matching speeds recorded in Norse sagas. The ancient design still holds up today. They weren't just fast, they were light, which meant faster acceleration, sharper turns, and better control than heavier boats. That shallow hull, it didn't just let them sneak through rivers, it reduced drag, even in open sea, letting them glide while others got bogged down. And here's the wildest part. They weren't trying to break records, they just wanted to raid and get home alive. In Viking sagas, their ships were called serpents that cut through the sea. So how did a wooden warship built over 1,000 years ago outpace modern boats? You're about to find out. It wasn't just about speed, but here's the part that blew everyone's mind. Because when we open the hull and look inside, what they did next feels like something out of science fiction. It didn't look high-tech, but underneath that simple shell was one of the smartest ship designs in history. Out at sea, you don't get second chances. Storms hit hard, enemies hit harder. If you couldn't outrun either, you burned, or worse, you never made it home. It wasn't just a boat, it was a survival machine, built for speed, strength, and stealth. And it starts with a design feature so simple, it feels like cheating. The shallow draft. Most ships back then needed deep water to stay afloat. Viking ships? They could sail in just three feet. That's barely deeper than your bathtub. That meant rivers, marshes, estuaries, even beaches. The Vikings could sail into them all where other navies couldn't even float. And if there wasn't water, they picked the ship up and walked. But we'll come back to that. Now look at how they built it. The hull used a method called clinker building, planks overlapping like fish scales. Each layer tucked slightly over the one below, creating a surface that was flexible yet watertight. It was rare in Europe at the time, but the Vikings mastered it. That overlapping design didn't just add strength, it let the hull flex with the sea. So instead of smashing into waves, the ship moved with them, absorbing force 
instead of fighting it. It was like giving the ship suspension. Modern engineers call that dynamic hull efficiency. The materials mattered too. Each plank was hand-cut oak, thin, light, but tough. The whole ship was strong enough to survive the Atlantic, but light enough to carry over land. We're talking about a 20-meter ship. That weighed less than your SUV. And the balance? Perfectly tuned. The shape, the weight, the flexibility, it all worked together like a single muscle slicing through water. All of this built with no blueprints, no machines, just knowledge passed down through generations, and tools as simple as axes and rope. So the next time you see a Viking ship replica at a museum, remember, that boat isn't just old, it's smarter than half the stuff in your marina. But there's a deeper reason they built it this way. Why did they need this much speed? Stay tuned, it gets even crazier. Speed was everything, because when you're launching a raid at dawn, you better be gone before the first bell rings. Imagine a peaceful coastal village. The sun's just coming up. You hear oars, you look out, and dragon heads are slicing through the mist. By the time you blink, they've landed. Forty warriors spill out, and by the time you sound the alarm, the ships are already gone. This wasn't just an attack, this was a magic trick. Appear, strike, disappear, but raiding was only part of the story. Speed gave Vikings something most people didn't have in the Middle Ages, options. They could trade across the North Sea one month, then show up on a Russian river weeks later. Their shallow draft ships let them sail up narrow channels through ice melt, across marshes, and take routes no one expected. By the time anyone knew where they were, they were already somewhere else. That's how they reached the Volga, the Black Sea, even Baghdad. And here's the part that rewrites history books. Leif Erikson sailed to Newfoundland around the year 1000 AD. That's nearly 500 years before Columbus. But here's what made it even more impressive. He made it back. Because in Norse culture, a ship that didn't return didn't just sink, it was judged. Some believed storms were sent by Thor. Others believed a ship that died at sea would sail into Valhalla. And if your ship survived, it wasn't just lucky, it was blessed. And today, naval engineers still study these ships their stealth, their lift, their ability to outrun modern boats a thousand years later, and it gets even crazier when you realize they did all this using hand tools, animal sails, and raw muscle. So, what did they leave behind? You'd think Viking ships disappeared with the Middle Ages, but they didn't vanish. They evolved. Because in the world of high-speed stealth naval warfare, we're still chasing their secrets. And get this, modern Special Forces boats, including Navy SEAL's fast assault craft, borrow directly from Viking ship design. Shallow draft, narrow hull, low profile. Why? Because those three things let you sneak in, hit hard, and vanish. Just like a Viking raid. Modern naval engineers still study how Viking ships moved, how they stayed stable in chaos, glided over rough water, and handled sharp turns with ease. And here's what'll really mess with your head. Some Viking replica ships, built using the same ancient tools and methods, have been clocked outrunning modern sailboats. Yeah a thousand-year-old blueprint, still winning races. So why does it still work? Because the longship wasn't built for comfort. It was built for performance. Everything served a purpose. The shape, the balance, the weight. It moved like muscle through water, fast, flexible, and focused. Today's top ship designers are still trying to reverse engineer what Vikings did with just wood and instinct. And if that wasn't wild enough, they didn't just sail their ships, they carried them. That's right, up to 10 kilometers over land, through forests, across hills, even between rivers. Most navies would turn back if the river dried up. The Vikings? They picked up the boat and kept going. But how? It worked because the long ship wasn't just fast, it was light. They'd roll the hull over logs like a conveyor belt. 30 to 40 men moving in perfect sync. The same rhythm they used to row. It wasn't just clever. It was terrifying, because imagine this. You live in a quiet village, 10 kilometers from the coast. You hear a strange thumping in the woods, and suddenly, a dragon-headed ship rolls out of the trees. So yeah, if the sea got in their way, they sailed. If the land got in the way, they walked. This wasn't a one-off stunt either. They built trade routes across Eastern Europe this way, dragging ships between rivers to reach the Black Sea. Vikings carrying ships through forests sounds insane, right? But that's literally nothing compared to what they built when they got back home. We're talking full Viking houses, built by hand with no nails in under eight hours. And I know you wanna see that for yourself, so just click this video right here.